Hey, how's it going? In this video, we are going to cover helicopter instrument procedures and the reason why helicopters would ever need to do instrument procedures is if you find yourself in the clouds. Um, let's say you inadvertently go into the clouds and you need to get yourself back on the ground. That's option one. The second option you would ever need to do helicopter instruments is if you are a instrument rated helicopter pilot in an instrument rated helicopter and then this is going to be part of your normal everyday activities you know this is very common for the helicopter ems world uh, for the offshore offshore oil rig world so there's a couple different scenarios where you would really need to know instrument stuff so we're going to just quickly go over general procedures and then i'm going to walk you through some really fun procedures and i've got a really cool interactive way to do it so stick with me this is going to be a fun one how helicopter instrument procedures work is it's very similar if not the exact same as what airplanes do and there are two types of systems that you can use if you are in the clouds, there's two ways to get down. There is what is called an ILS, an instrument landing system, or there is RNAV, which stands for area navigation, but basically it's just a GPS approach. So let's cover how this system actually works very quickly and then we'll talk about actually flying one. All right, so this is an ILS setup. Here is the runway, you can see the runway here. And what an ILS does is it gives you lateral guidance and vertical guidance to bring you safely down on a three degree path down to the runway. So you would be looking at your instruments in the cockpit and it would be able to bring you down. So we've got lateral guidance, which gives us uh, indications on the left or right of the runway called a localizer. So here's the runway, there are two blobs to radio frequencies on either side of the runway. So on the left side there is a 90 megahertz blob that is sent out from an antenna and then on the right side there is a 150 megahertz transmit signal and your aircraft can pick up both of these signals and if you're getting too much of the 90 hertz, it's going to know you're too far over here. If you're getting too much of the 150 megahertz, it's going to know you're over here. So you should be getting just 50% of each. You should just be getting just the same amount of both. And that means you are on the localizer. So we'll talk about how this is displayed, but it is the same thing for a glide slope. Now a glide slope is your vertical descent down. And here is the runway and we've got a three degree glide slope. There is an antenna that sends out a signal in the 90 megahertz and the 150 megahertz. And to be on glide slope, you want to be right in the middle of both the 90 megahertz and the 150 megahertz. And if you're getting too much of the 90, you're too high. If you're getting too much of the 150, you're low. So you want to be getting just 50%. So this is called an ILS, instrument landing system. Now this is typically my favorite type of approach to fly. It's just pretty foolproof. It's pretty easy to fly. Um, there's what is also like I referred to earlier in RNAV and RNAV is just an area navigation GPS and it can give you pretty much the same information, but it's not as accurate and it cannot get you down that low. Now a glide slope can typically get you to 200 feet above the runway. So if you're riding the glide slope, you can typically get down to about 200 feet before you have to go mist. So what that means is instrument flying and flying an instrument approach down to the ground does not get you to the runway in helicopters or most planes. There are certain airplanes that can do like a category three approach where it can follow the instruments all the way down to the runway and the airplane can land itself basically, but that's not how it typically works for most. Um, most instrument approaches will get you down to typically like two to 500 feet above the ground. At that point, if you do not see the ground, you are going to follow your instruments and go mist and do a mist approach procedure. So uh, you don't get all the way down, but you get pretty close. Like 200 feet above the runway is quite close to the runway before you have to go mist and follow your instruments and try a different procedure. Um, maybe at the same airport, maybe at a different airport, you got to try something else. So there's a couple different ways to display this information. There's an older method, which I'm kind of showing here or a newer uh, digital method, which we'll see in a second. But here we are following a localizer and we've got a center uh, course deflection indicator and then our like glide slope uh, indication. So this vertical one is going to tell us whether we're left or right of course and then this vertical one is going to tell us whether we're high or not so in this situation we're coming in on runway nine and we are right on the localizer now if i 
show you here. Here we are to the, to the right of the course. We need to fly to the left to get on the center line. So what our indication is gonna say is, hey, you need to go left. Basically the term we use is fly the needle. The needle says left, go left. So here we need to go left to get on course. Over here, we are to the left, of course. We need to go right. We need to fly right to intercept the course. So our needle is gonna indicate to the right. So we need to fly right, fly the needle to get on course. Okay, so here now we're looking at our uh, glide slope or our vertical track indication. So right here we are on glide slope. What you wanna see is that perfect cross the whole time as you're flying your approach all the way down to your altitude. So that one looks good. Here we are below glide slope and we need to get higher to get on glide slope. We need to fly up we need to fly the needle, the needle's up, so we're gonna fly up to get to it. Conversely, we are above the glide slope, we need to go down here, so the needle is down indicating we need to go down, and that's it. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's quite foolproof now, it is difficult to get like really competent and to get really good at it, but this is how you fly in ILS, and this is what most airplanes use, this is what most jets use, um, most helicopters. The RNAV is uh, the GPS approaches, those are super common too, but this is like just your standard instrument landing system approach. So this is the really cool part of the video. What we are going to do is we are actually going to fly an approach. What I have pulled up on my screen is the ILS or localizer runway 15 approach. Um, Basically, and we have the ILS to runway 15. This could also be shot as just a localizer without glide slope information, but we will do just the ILS. And what I've got here on my iPad is the Garmin 650 trainer app. I will show a picture of this, but, um, and we're also gonna do some screen recording, but this is, I did all my instrument training on the Garmin 650, and there's an app, and you can actually practice the full approach, and that's what we're gonna do. So this is really good. Um, if you're an instructor out there, I recommend using this. I don't think they have it for the Garmin 430, but they've got one for the Garmin G1000. So this is an awesome resource to practice instrument stuff and just GPS competency. But let's talk about this approach plate. It can look confusing, but it's really not. It's really quite simple. So there's always a title of the approach. This is the ILS to runway 15 into Burlington International. The way we pick up that lateral guidance and that vertical guidance is through a frequency and we've got a receiver that we tune in the frequency and that frequency is 110.3 so that's why it's in the top it's really important so we pick up the right frequency an airport can have multiple different frequencies for multiple different approaches so that is our frequency the final approach course is 146 so uh, basically southeast we are going to be coming in this way to the airport on a 146 magnetic heading. So as we're coming in on this approach, if I was looking at my compass, it would say 146 degrees. Um, the runway that we're landing, runway 15, has 7,800 feet of total distance, uh, landing distance available. When the actual touchdown zone elevation is 326 feet, and the airport elevation is 335 feet. And then over here is our notes section. Um, circling run to runway one, not available at night, don't care about that. Runway one five, helicopter visibility restriction below three quarters statute miles, vis uh, statute miles not available. So there is an exception where helicopters can uh, reduce the minimums, but don't worry about it. Um, for in op, uh, ALS, increase straight and localized one five, all CADs, blah, 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 blah. So moving on to the next section, this is our MALSER. MALSER stands for Medium Intensity Approach Lighting System. So as we're coming in on runway 15, we are going to see this configuration of lights. Now you can go look up what a MALSER looks like, but there is a pretty uh, significant amount of lights that is going to try to help us, like flashing lights, uh, lights that we'll be able to see. So those are the lights we're gonna see. And then we have our mist approach. So if we are coming down, and we hit our altitude that we're supposed to be able to see the runway, and if we have not seen the runway, we are going to go mist. That mist approach is climb to 800, then so climb vertically to 800 feet, then a climbing right turn direct to the BTV, the Burlington VOR, and 
uh, the BO Burlington VOR and DME and Burlington VOR DME radial 202 to Wainala intersection of, of the BTV radial 6.4 DME and hold. So it's basically saying if we go missed right here, we're going to go straight up to 800, do a climbing right turn. We're going to come to this radial and we're going to be in just a racetrack holding pattern. We're just going to hold here until we figure out what we want to do. So we can just hold in this protected area until we're ready to go. All right, so we're going to keep going. The ATIS, which is your weather and airport information, that's on frequency 123.8. What these backup numbers are, to I think uh, these are the military channels. So if you're like in a military aircraft, those are the channels you would be on. But for uh, just general aviation, we would pick up the ATIS on 123.8. Burlington Approach Control is on 121.1. Burlington Tower is on 118.3. Um, ground Control is on 126.3. Clearance Delivery is on 119.15. And the Unicom is 122.9. All right, so moving on to the fun part of this video, actually flying this approach, how this would work is you could come in from any direction and typically what happens is air traffic control will vector you onto the approach course. They will vector you onto the approach. So you can see this big uh, triangle looking thing, this arrow looking thing, that is the localizer course, that is the approach course, that is the approach. So you can come from the south and you can fly north onto the localizer course and then you're gonna turn right and start coming down to the airport. This is the airport. You can come from the east and fly and turn onto the approach course. You can come from the west or the northwest directly onto the approach course. You can come from this way, do a turn, and come back in here. So anyway, you need to get onto this big diamond thing. So what we are going to do is we're going to come from the north and basically in like 95% of situations, air traffic control will vector you onto the approach course. What a vector means is they are going to give you a heading and they're gonna tell you these different headings to fly and they will get you onto the approach course. So if you're like over here, they're gonna say, helicopter, blah, 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 fly west heading 270. So I'm gonna fly west heading 270. And then they're gonna say, helicopter, blah, 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 you are two miles from the approach course, intercept the approach course, you are cleared for the ILS-1, 1-5 approach. Or you can start over here and they're going to say helicopter blah 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 fly heading 090 onto the approach course and then you're cleared for the approach course or you can fly south whatever. They will give you headings to fly to get on the approach course. Once you're on the approach course you're going to follow the localizer down to the ground. What altitudes do you follow? Well you should have that glide slope which is going to give you indications but basically we are going to start the approach above 2200 then we're going to get on the localizer we're going to get onto the course, start getting lateral and vertical guidance. And then we want to hit FOVs. So along our approach course, we've got a couple different intersections. We have the CFBPD intersection. We have a uh, hero right here. We've got FOVs and then we've got the localizer. So we want to be at 2200 and then we want to come down. We want to hit FOVs, which is our final approach fix at 2200 and then just follow the localizer down. So we're gonna hit FOVs at 2200 then follow the localizer down until we hit the runway. And so as we're coming down, we can continue all the way down the approach until we hit 576 feet as read off our altimeter. So when we hit 576 feet, we should be able to see the runway and if we don't, we have to go missed. Now that missed approach procedure is up here but it is also right here in symbols. So climb out straight to 800 feet. On the missed approach, climb straight to 800. Climbing right turn to 3000. Climbing right turn to 3000. Then we're gonna go direct to BTV VOR. Direct BTV VOR. The BTV radial 202. BTV VOR DME radial 202. Direct to the Wainala intersection and hold. Direct to Wainala intersection and hold. They, it's also printed in pictures on the map. So climbing right turn, so straight out to 800, climbing right turn direct to the BTV VOR, radial 202, the Wainala intersection and hold. So we're gonna come down on the approach, looking for 576, should be able to see the ground. And then once we see the ground or once we see the airport, that point we're just going to go visual and fly a normal approach and then uh, we'll be good. Uh, so this is the airport diagram over here. 
So here's runway 15. This is the runway we're coming in on. This is kind of interesting, this section down here. This is telling us from our final approach fix to our missed approach point is 5.2 nautical miles. So our final approach fix is Foves, and then the point we go missed at is down here on the runway, or near the runway. Um, it's like half a mile away from the runway, 576 feet. It's only 5.2 nautical miles from the final approach fix to the missed approach point. Final approach fix to the missed approach point is 5.2 nautical miles. If we we're flying at 60 knots, it should take us 5 minutes and 12 seconds. If we're flying 90 knots, it should take us 3 minutes and 28 seconds and so on and so forth. You, you see how that works. Um, so we're going to fly this approach at 90 knots. You could start a timer and you technically should start a timer um, once you hit the final approach fix. And then you should it should take you 3 minutes and 28 seconds until you're at 576 feet on the localizer. Okay, capiche? All right, so now let's actually fly this. I am just going to show you real quick what we're doing. We are going to start up here near Franklin County. I can zoom in, whoops, that's too much. Okay, so we are going to start up here near Franklin County Airport, and then we are going to take vectors uh, down to the approach course, which is gonna intercept, start right about here, and then we're gonna fly the ILS into Burlington, the ILS 15 into Burlington. All right, so if you have an iPad, you can just go to the App Store and look for Garmin Trainer, and it is this one. Um, there's one up here with a smaller looking display. You don't want that one, but you want this one. So how this works is you go into it, you can select your aircraft, so we're in a rotorcraft. Uh, the GPS model, there's a couple different models, but I'm most familiar with the Garmin 650, so we'll click that. And then you can use either Jeppesen plates or Garmin plates, don't really worry about that. Um, and then start. So, here is our uh, trainer plate. So this demo mode is active, not for actual navigation. Okay, so on the top portion, we have our indicated airspeed, our heading, and our altitude. We can control these on the left and right, uh, the altitude on the left and right uh, controller. So we can come down in altitude. Our indicated airspeed, we can increase that or decrease that. And our heading, we can turn different headings. So pretty insane um we're gonna press continue so currently installed software um navigation 2004 whatever that's um or april of 2020 that i don't really care if it's that expired still gonna do the same thing uh fuel on board we'll say we've got whatever 20 gallons of fuel um fuel flow let's say we burn 10 gallons per hour whatever all right so our map I have no clue where we are right now. We are somewhere H -toss -toss really interesting. Okay. So we're going to start at FSO. That is where we are starting. All right, so here we are. And I'm actually going to turn the traffic off. What you can see is there are all these different airplanes around us. Uh, but we're going to turn that traffic off. So how you do that is you go menu, map overlays, and you can turn the traffic off just so it's a little bit less distracting. So we're going to fly down. So how we're actually going to load this procedure is you're going to go home, hold the home button. Whoops, that's, a, that's not right. We'll just go to the main page. You're going to go procedures, approach, and actually we're going to do the approach at uh, Burlington KBTV, Burlington International. We're going to do the ILS 1.5. Load, approach, and activate. That's it. That's all it is. So you just, I'll show you one more time, uh, on your home menu page, procedures, approach, uh, airport, put in the airport you want, KBTV, ILS 1.5, load, approach, and activate. So what this is doing is you can see this is actually going to take us direct to FOVES, our final approach fix. So we can see on the map here, it is going to take us to FOVES. It's shooting us direct to Foves onto the approach. So if we pull up the approach, it's taking us direct to Foves. So what I'm going to do is just increase uh, my airspeed pretty fast. I'm just holding this and you can see my airspeed is now like 180 knots. And this is just gonna help us. Um, and our altitude, we need to be 2000 feet at Foves. So I'm just gonna come down to like 3000. 
and I can set my heading as well. So I'm going to turn right and pretend that ATC was vectoring me. They said helicopter blah 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 fly heading 210. So I'm going to fly heading 210. We've got a, also a default nav page which tells us our just generic information that we need. So our distance from FOVs is 2.3 miles. Um, the actual heading we need to fly to get to Foves is 146. So that's our desired track. So I'm going to turn my heading to 146. Uh, maybe not that much yet. Our ground speed is 200 knots. Our track is changing. So the track is the actual heading we're flying and that's changing. So we can come back to the map here. And I'm going to keep increasing my speed here so that you guys don't have to just sit here and watch this fly. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is set up my frequencies. So currently I should probably be talking to approach on 121.1 so I can click on my frequencies 121.1 enter that. So I'm probably talking to them on that. And then the next people I'm going to talk to is tower. So approach is going to get me on the approach and then I'm going to talk to tower which is 118.3 so set those up. Alright so now I'm three miles from Foves. Uh, they would say helicopter blah blah blah, three miles from Foves, turn left heading 146 or probably a little bit less than that like 160 and intercept the final approach course. So that's what we're doing. I am turning left to intercept my approach course. I'm going to keep coming down in altitude and we are just slowly turning and intercepting our approach course. I can slow it down a little bit, still going pretty fast. All right, so a traffic alert, that's okay. And I went through my approach course, so we'll just come right a little bit. And I can come to my default nav page and you can see this pink line coming across the bar. It's telling me how close I'm getting to my approach course. So I am slowly getting to my approach course. I'm 0.6 miles from Phobes. You can see that in the top left corner. And now I am slowly turning to 146. If I come back to my map and zoom in, you can see I'm basically on the approach course. I do need to come to the right a little bit. And so you would be flying this in the helicopter and this is just the information you would have. So now we are 4.5 miles from uh, the runway. I am on my approach course and I would be seeing that uh, I'm right on my approach course. So this is just a different way to show it. And I would be coming down in altitude following the glide slope. Now there is no way to see the glide slope on this, but I would be on the glide slope coming down and I'm waiting for that five seven six uh, altitude and that's the point I would go missed so I'm just coming down I'm 3.2 miles away I'm right on the approach course I'm going 140 knots the approach course is a little bit to my right now so I'm just turning a little bit to the right following that needle and I'd just be in the clouds following my localizer down or my glide slope down and my localizer laterally and we can come back to the map and we are right on the approach course, waiting for runway 15. So I'll come back to default nav. We are 1.4 miles away from the approach course. I'm just going to turn right. And as you get closer to that localizer, it's just going to get more and more sensitive. So we're 1.1 miles away, we're going 140 knots, I'm going to keep working down that altitude. I should be at about 600 feet um, as I hit my altitude. So I'm going to keep coming left here. 0.5 away, I'm at 600 feet. I'm arriving at the waypoint. It gets really sensitive right about here. And we're just about there and we should break out right now. And if we don't break out, we're going to remain suspended. 
And now we're gonna start 500. our Mr. Purge procedure. All right, so that is just a quick and dirty version of instrument, uh, instrument flying in the helicopter. I just wanted to explain this to you. Uh, instrument is not, it, it is kind of difficult and there's a lot of little intricacies, but I really like int uh, instrument because it's very black and white. You're either doing it right or you're doing it wrong. So this is just an intro of how to fly in ILS and just the basics of it. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. I really enjoy instruments, so feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, smash the like button so I know. And if you've got any other video ideas for things you want to see about helicopters or aviation, let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.